There's an old feeling that the shape of the universe is the shape of man. I don't know if you've ever heard that said. That man is the microcosm and that the universe as a whole is the macrocosm. Now as you plumb out into the universe and explore it astronomically, it gets very strange. You begin to see things in the depths that at first sight seem utterly remote. How could they have anything to do with us? They are so far off and so unlike. And in the same way, when you start probing into the inner workings of the human body, you come across all kinds of funny little monsters and wiggly things that bear no resemblance to what we recognize as the human image. Look at a spermatozoan under a microscope, a little tadpole. And how can that have any connection with a grown human being? It's so unlike, you see. It's foreign feeling. And you get the creep sometimes, a foreign feeling about yourself, if you feel your own pulse. Or if you're able to look at an x-ray, it's in some way of your inner organs working. See, they're all strangers, because we don't know about. And they give us the creeps as if they were, you know, coming across some weird insects in the dark. And that sort of feeling. But what we will always find out in the end, when we meet the very strange and we look into the distant reaches of space, there will one day be the dawning recognition that's me. Why that's me? And the, the whole game of the universe, you see, is to appear as strange to itself as it possibly can. That's how one keeps variety going, that's how one keeps wonder going, and all kinds of uh, exciting development. How different can you get in the beginning that all said, get lost to himself, you see. So, uh, we, we shall find, for example, that space that you see all around you and containing you. And you can in feel space in many ways. Space is not only something that comes through the eyes. The movement of your arms, if the closed eyes are for a blind person, is his way of knowing space. And you can hear space audibly. Lots of uh, sounds appear to be in restricted spaces or ample spaces. And the silence that goes with sound corresponds to space. And even St. Thomas Aquinas, that old Catholic theologian, said that good derives its virtue from evil, just as it is the silent cause that gives sweetness to the child. So, but space, you see, that seems to contain, space is one's mind. This was common sense to people living uh, in the early Renaissance, for example, at the time of Dante. There are many references in Dante's poetry to the identity of mind and space. And in likewise in a <coughs> 8th century text in China, the Sutra of the Sixth Patriarch, he likens the nature of mind to the nature of space. He says just as space contains all the sun and the moon and the stars and the people and the mountains and the forests. So, the nature of mind, the nature of consciousness, the nature of oneself contains all these things. So, you see that if you think that way, you have an image of man that is global, that is very different from the image in which man is defined as bounded by his skin. That's a prejudice. We think now, for example, I have my own private thoughts. Well, nobody has private thoughts. Because one thinks in images and words, and these words and images are derived from the whole thought structure of the society in which you live. 
We think thoughts. The, the domain of mind is very similar to the grid structure of an electric power supply system. You know what happens is there's a network of power stations and transformers so arranged that if one of them gives out and fails to supply a certain area, immediately the grid connects them with other sources of power. And in rather a similar way our minds are connected. Let's take one very obvious example of it. What um, Northrop Fry calls the order of words. The order of words is all existing literature. Both rhetoric, what is spoken, of course, and what is written down. Now it's his theory that as a scholar of literature, the history of literature, he can take any piece of writing of a reasonable length and tell you when it was written. Because everything that is written and said is inescapably related to the whole order of words. And it's amazing what little things you might not notice would give you away. But we can say, well, obviously he has read this. Thinking, say, of a particular novelist or poet. So it must come after the date when that novel was published. But he couldn't possibly use an expression like that to say, for example, that it was a capital day. He would never, he would never use that expression living, say, in contemporary 20th century America. That's a Victorianism, or it's an Edwardian way of talking. And so, in by all sorts of little clues like that, the scholar could pin down a piece of writing to when it was written. See? That is because every individual piece of writing is a function of all writing that's being done. Well, now that's a very specific and, uh, almost crude illustration of something that's going on in a far more complicated way than that. It isn't only all writing, all thinking is being done in relation to the total order of thought. And, uh, in a still more subtle way, all living is being done in relation to the total order of life, what the Chardin calls the biosphere. And it, it goes way beyond that. Because of the vast interplay of what we now call gravitational and electrical fields which embrace everything that there is. That is why in the ancients when a person was born cast his horoscope. That was a map of the universe at the time of that person's birth and therefore it was a drawing of his soul because the soul is not inside the body. The body is inside the soul. The soul, your soul, is the whole universe as it is focused upon your organism. Now, of course, astrology is a very primitive science and it interpreted the influence of the universe upon the individual in very crude ways and it works mostly by good guesswork on the part of the astrologer. Uh, if you know how to tell fortunes, have a fair, uh, you will find out a great deal about how all these predictive uh, psychic sciences work. Because the client invariably gives himself away, either by his anxiety to be told the truth or by his anxiety to conceal it. They work equally well. But, but there is, you see, underneath the astrological notion a sound idea that the true map of the soul is the picture of the universe surrounding the individual. It isn't necessarily that the, your soul is not the picture of the universe just at the moment when you were born, you see. It goes along all the time you live, because the whole thing expresses itself through you. And therefore, in that sense, the, 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 the map of the stars, the horoscope, etc., was an image of man in just the same way as we regard a picture of the human body as an image of man, and it's an image from a different point of view. It's a bigger image. 
which shows in other words that your mind is very largely outside your body. After all, it's inside too, it's simultaneous. You see, I cannot think. I can't have a mind without seeing, feeling, and relating to other people. 